Hello everyone, this is Women's Grandmaster Sabina Foyshore. Welcome back to my YouTube channel. For today, I'm bringing you part two in my endgame series for beginners. If you haven't seen part one, I highly recommend checking out that video, which I'm going to link in the description below. Let us get started with a short review. In the previous video, we have discussed of the importance of winning an endgame when we get to have our king in front of the pawn and about this specific special rule, which is called the magical rank. Whenever white has their pawn on fifth rank, and in case it's a black pawn, it's going to be on fourth rank, with the kings in front of the pawn, if they are between the B and the G files, we can just basically switch it off uh, to the C file, D, E, F, or G. The side with the pawn is going to be able to win that position. What was a little bit different about the B and G files were the fact that in order to win, the, the side, like in this case white, can only choose to move their king on one of the sides. They can't go on both. King A6 would be the correct move. And as black continues by keeping the opposition, white would push the pawn forward, king to B8, and now B7, forcing black to move the king away. And now after king A7, white wins the game. Not to be confused with king c6, which allows black to have this little trick by taking advantage of the fact that this b pawn is really close to the edge of the board, which means black's king is, could soon run out of moves, so they can go king a7, and once you play king c7, which is the typical way to uh, bring the king to support the next three pawn pushes, black is going to go king to a8, and now if we play b6, black would be stalemated. So that would be a huge mistake for white. Should you by mistake play king c6 and your opponent would play king a7, do not panic so much as to, oh no, I'm not going to be winning anymore. Don't make this mistake either, because if you play b6, black can play king a8 and now they save the game. Once again, if you play king c7, it's going to be a stalemate. And if you push b7, Black will make it right on time. King b8, and now you cannot support your pawn to promote anymore. You have to go king to b6, and black is once again stalemated. So, should you make that mistake, not to panic, okay? Just return right back to b6, accept that you've made a tiny mistake, and then when they go king b8, please do return to king a6. Remember, you have to go to the edge of the board to avoid allowing the opponent to have this stalemating trick, okay? Please, though, do not repeat this three times. Should you not know by now, repeating the position three times is going to lead to a, stal to a uh, draw. So please, please, please do not make that mistake. Let's move on to something that I haven't discussed in the previous video, and that is what happens if we have our king behind the pawn. Well, the reason I haven't dis discussed it or started with it first is because it's actually a draw. Shall, if our opponent has made it with their king in front of our pawn, there's no way for us to progress the position. We can really try, but it's not going to be enough. All, the only thing that black should do is stay with their king back and forth next to the pawn on the same file. And when we try to advance, and we can basically choose either sides, as I was mentioning to you below, uh, I mean, before, black can play king e6, and when we push the pawn, they get in front, and they would always have this path or pattern where they stay in front of the pawn, and then whenever we advance, they take our opposition, and this thing will be repeating until the end. When we get the pawn on seventh rank, they get in front, and this is just a draw. Now, I want to specifically point out, because I have some people who might wonder, well, why do I need to always take this opposition? If you have not seen that first video, you might not understand that part. So once again, please don't forget to check it out. We cannot just go back and say, okay, I just go back, I stay in front of the pawn. That's all that it seems that black needs to do to save the game. But the truth is that would be a huge mistake because now white can simply play king d6, take the opposition in front of the pawn, and then whenever you choose one side to move your king, white moves their king to the other side and forward, diagonally forward, 
allowing for the pawn push all the way to promotion. So please do not make that huge mistake. Learn that your king cannot, if you're the defending side, your king cannot be moving too far from the pawn. And you take the opposition as soon as white tries to advance with their king forward, you keep the opposition to restrict them from advancing more. With that said, I think we're done with these very simple positions. Um, let's move on to another one that's also not too difficult. A and H bonds, because that is something that I haven't really discussed. And so, in this case, we have the A pawn. What's so special about it? Well, it's not really special. It's actually kind of inconvenient for white to stay with the A pawn passed or the H pawn passed because, unfortunately, there's no win. Due to the lack of another file to the left side, uh, black can just wait back and forth in front of the pawn and on the B file, and then there's no progress for white. Typically, we would play king to the left, which would be, I guess, Z file, but there's no Z file on the board. We only have it 8 by 8 so black can just wait, king to b8, we push a7, king a8, and now the position is a draw once again. The exact same thing would happen with an h pawn, not to be worried, it really doesn't matter whose turn it is, as long as we can just wait around these four squares, h1, h2, g1, g2, not further than that, white is going to be able to save the game. So, waiting, feel free to push, you can move the king around as a trickery. It's not changing anything. This would be the situation where we would play king J file, but once again, no J file present. So here, 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 H2 check, king H1. And of course, you can move the king wherever you want, but I'll take the pawn anyways, it's a draw. So this was it. These are the most important positions, the basic ones that as a chess player, who wants to improve these you have to know you have to dream about them let's move on to something even more important the box of the pawn and in order to understand this we first need to understand what is the box of the pawn and i have chosen a position to exemplify it when we have an edge pawn a margin pawn the a pawn so well we know this is a past pawn there's nothing in front of it no other pawn that can capture it on its way to promotion and no pawn in front of it at all whatsoever of the opponent. Now, if black's king would be in front of the pawn, that would still be a passed pawn. So let's figure out what is the box of this pawn. So what you need to do in your mind, you have to create this kind of arrows. I find it always helpful to work with arrows to exemplify every single thing. Some people are more visual than others. So we know that in order for this pawn to promote, it has to go to a8. And now in order to figure out how close black's king needs to be in order to stop it, we have to figure out what the box is. So now you actually understand what is happening. So diagonally from the pawn, you go forward towards the pr uh, promoting file, the uh, promoting rank, I'm sorry. So you go diagonally all the way to E1, which is the point where those two arrows intersect. And we have created in our mind this triangle. Now what we're going to do, we're going to duplicate that triangle on this other side of the board. So we will go all the way to E4. And now we have figured out the parameters of the box. The corners of the box are E4, A4, A8, and E8. What it means is if black's king is anywhere between these squares, this parameter, it can be d4, it can be c4, it can be e6, it can be even e8, all right? Even on the edges, it would still catch the pawn on its way to promotion. Now, black's king is clearly away from that, so they will not catch. Just as a fast demonstration, you can clearly see that the pawn pushes and the king doesn't stop it and why promotes and this is something i'm not discussing in my videos hopefully you have already learned how to win with the queen moving on to the next position to specifically see what is happening when the king is somewhere really close really close in the parameter once again 
these are the edges of that box, right? And it's a square. So the king is in front, which means now it's black's turn. They can simply go and grab the pawn the next move. Feel free to push it, but then we'll, they will just take it. And of course, having our king far away doesn't help. But once again, this is an A pawn. So anyways, with considering what we've studied earlier in this video, we know that that would be a draw anyways. Let's move on to another position to see if black could save this and what exactly is happening. So I've put the exact same pawn because I find it interesting and important to just make sure you picture what is happening so that afterwards you can switch it around and it should make sense to you. If I keep switching it around myself, maybe you don't really get the correct picture. So we have the param uh, parameters of this A4 pawn, right? And black king is not in the param uh, parameter, but it is black's turn. So what should black do? Either one of these three moves would help him catch the pawn. Because with either one of these three moves, black will enter in the box. So let's try going king e6. Now, let's see how things happen. We push a5. Now, I want you guys to notice that as the pawn pushes forward, the parameter gets smaller and smaller before we had it here, right? That was the parameter. Now, we have it here. Every time you push once, it gets smaller. Then the king can continue coming, and I'm going to put it right in the corner so that you can see that even in the corner, it stops it. It's a6. This is the new parameter. King comes to c6. This is the new parameter, and the king makes it to b7, and as you promote, the king captures, and it is a draw. That's the special thing about the box. Let's move on to a position where the pawn is more central. So here we will have actually two boxes <laughs> added together. They will make a bigger box, so it will not be in the shape of a square anymore. This time the box is going to be in the shape of a rectangular. All right, so let's look at the first diagonal. So we'll go diagonally all the way to the promotion rank, create these arrows into a triangle, and then we'll duplicate that on the other side all the way to the intersection point. And now the box should be this, and it will be a square. But this pawn could be stopped from the other side as well, should the king be there. And this is the other triangle that we have to create and all in all, let's try to see if I can create another color. Nope, that didn't work. <laughs> all right. Now that is exactly the parameter in which black skin needs to be in order to save the game anywhere. Literally, it could be in a7 and it would catch it. It could be in g5 and it would catch it. But guess what? I have set up this position with white to move. So actually, after white pushes d6, the parameter gets smaller, which means black king is a little bit too far and is not going to be able to suddenly jump to f7. And because of that, as you can see, the king won't catch the pawn. White promotes, and once again, you should be able to win this. The last position that I'm going to leave you with, <laughs> or maybe not, maybe we'll do one more. So here, this is the parameter and it's black to move. So hopefully by now you understand what it is that you need to go to do. You need to enter with the king in front of the box. The box gets smaller and it's on that side too. So what if the king is on this side? You should still know what are the parameters of the box. The king enters, the box gets smaller once again, but the king catches the pawn. And there you have it, draw. Now last one, then this should make you think if we have this position and uh, yeah, let's put it like this and it is black to play. Should black be able to draw this? If you answered yes, you were, guess what? Wrong. Well, this is going to be tricky and you always have to be aware with where the pawn starts from. Okay, what is the box when the pawn starts? And if it has the ability to move twice, if it has the ability to move twice, you need to actually be a little bit closer. So in this position, it is black to move, and it seems like they entered the parameter of the pawn, but this pawn is not going to be played uh, to a3. This would make no sense. The pawn would be played to a4, and the new parameter of the box 
is the one highlighted by my circles, which means that in this position, black cannot just make it anymore and the pawn is going to be promoted. Should I have set this position, actually with the king in g7, also black to play, black is in the parameter and would have to rush right now in order to catch up with the new parameter of the pawn here, king e7, and black would draw the game. With that said, I really, really hope you've enjoyed this video. I'm going to continue making more videos with king and pawn endgames. Please stay tuned. If you love this video, thanks for subscribing and giving me a thumbs up. And feel free to share it with some of your other friends who might um, be starting playing chess and are interested in improving their endgames. Have a wonderful day and see you in my next video. Thank you.